Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. We're gonna be talking about a concern that a lot of people have, and I hear this a lot, it's just like, I've been doing a lot of product research and I can't find anything. People will come to me and say, you find so many ideas, how do you find that many ideas? I can only, you know, I go through this many, I only get so many that fit the criteria. And I wanted to show you a easy little trick that you can do to turn one idea and basically just multiply it into more and more ideas. So if you're new here, be sure to like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Um, so we're gonna be moving over into my computer here and we're just starting with Helium 10. Uh, so this is a tool that I've really grown to love. I've been using it for well over six months now. Uh, and it really is one of those uh, tools that I just tend to start off my product research day with. Um, I'll generally come into Blackbox. Um, if you don't have Helium 10, there'll be a link down in the description that you could get a discount 10% uh, for life or 50% off your first month. So I like this keyword product research tool. Now, a lot of you may have started with this software. A lot of you may have seen me use this software or this specific feature, but there's something specifically that we're gonna be doing later in the video that's gonna show you how to just turn not only what this gives you into ideas, but how you can turn each one of those ideas into you know, several more ideas. Um, that's the whole idea here is just expanding the number of data um, that you can actually analyze in a given amount of time. And then, you know, if you could become more efficient, uh, then you're gonna progress faster than the next person who can't become more efficient. So search volume, I like to start with just a thousand. I don't get too greedy when it comes to search volume. That means there's about 33 and a third customers every single day looking for this product or this phrase that is gonna pop up when we're done here. Monthly revenue. Um, I like to do about a minimum of 6,000 because that's assuming 50% net margin is really high. That's like best case scenario in most situations. And you know, I wanna make $100 a day profit with a product. So that's that's where my mind is at right there. And then price, we're gonna do um, just about six or $7. I'll actually go all the way down to six. Six is really low, um, but I have reasoning for doing six um, or seven or sometimes eight, just in that general ballpark, which is much lower than a lot of people will generally do is because there might be a market average of six to nine, but oftentimes you'll see one seller that's getting away with a $14.99 or $16.99 price range because they've added more value to their listing. And a lot of the times those listings will actually be one of the best sellers. Um, so just because the average market price is low doesn't mean that you can come in and increase your price to sell and earn more profit. So we're gonna do a max price of about 55 here. My most expensive product that I sell on Amazon is $53. Um, I earn over $20 in profit per unit for every unit sold on that specific product. So there is an upside to selling these more expensive products, but uh, the downsides are gonna cost more. So if you have a lower budget, I might even bump this down to about 35. Um, review count, we're gonna do a maximum, not a minimum, we're gonna do a maximum of about 100. The reason I do 100, not 75 or 50 or 300, is because this is, again, this is average review count because we're, we're not just looking at specific products anymore, we're looking at specific keywords. And if the average review count is 200 or 300, that's a little high. I actually want the average review count to be lower than 100. But again, if someone has 100 reviews, um, there, there's oftentimes something that I can do to you know, add more value to my product and get that customer to think it's worth buying mine. Whereas if someone has 1,000 or 2,000 reviews, it, it starts becoming incrementally more difficult um, in that same situation to increase your value. Just because there's something called review loyalty where if something has 1,000 reviews and even if it's four stars and yours is five, but you only have 20, um, this amount of social proof that goes into that, even if it was 3.8 stars, something like that, people feel more comfortable investing in something that a lot of people have invested in before themselves. So review rating, we're not gonna touch. Word count, um, eh, we could do like a two to seven. That's fine. One word is not usually gonna lead you to anything productive. Two words oftentimes, eh, yeah, two words is probably the minimum I wanna see. Definitely not one. There's really not one word you could type into Amazon and find a good product or a good market for that matter. Um, it's gonna tend to be very broad. We're gonna come to categories here. Go arts, crafts, and sewing. Comment down below if you like my product research videos. Um, I did one about three weeks ago and you guys absolutely loved it. It's one of my higher view videos recently. Um, so I appreciate you guys sticking around. Okay, so here we go. We have just selected some categories here. Um, nothing particular. There's no sh 
special strategy I'm deploying here. I'm just clicking into categories that I know I'm allowed to sell in and that I know uh, tend to have a lot of good private label products in them. You just copy what I did or experiment with just one or two at a time. And then we'll come over to shipping to your size. We really just wanna do small um, and large standard size. Small oversize, you do jump up a f uh, your fees, go into another category and they become quite a bit higher. But if we have a price up to $55, small oversize would be warranted. So that would technically be okay. Uh, definitely not anything over small oversize, however. So we'll select that. I tend to just start right here. There are some more filters that we could use, but I'm just gonna stop it here because I want the most number of listings to show up. And just by nature of how filters work, the more filters you use, the less product ideas you'll get. There'll be more targeted product ideas, but they're not gonna be um, as broad of an amount of ideas. And we, we tend to, what I found is best, is starting with a huge bucket of ideas and intuitively going through them yourself because I'd rather have too many ideas um, than too few ideas. So we're gonna go ahead and what I like to do is I like to sort, uh, there's a couple different ways we can sort here. Uh, we could just look through here or if we come up to sort by, we, we have this absolutely massive list here. Um, and so what we could do is we could do um, search volume low to high is one that I'll usually do. Um, and the reason that I do that is because it'll show us all those ones with just a thousand. And here's one thing that I've noticed, just because something has quite a bit more search volume doesn't make it better, okay? When I entered my macrame shelf market, that now makes me over $4,000 a month in profit passively. Um, there was only about 800 of searches per month for the main keyword I was trying to rank for, but there was like no one selling it, just, just absolute horrible options for the customer. So I came in as like almost a lifeline and provided the best option. So what I'm trying to get you to understand here is I would much rather sell a product that only has a thousand search volume, but only has one or two poor quality competitors than sell something that has 10,000 search volume, but may have 50 or 60 or a whole page full of good competitors, even if they are low review, it's still just a lot of competitors to fight your way through. And it's harder to get people to click on your listing, uh, your listing and commit to it because they have all these other great options. So I'm simply gonna look through here and I'm just gonna click on anything that really piques my interest. Um, we already know that it's sorted. Nothing's gonna be lower than a thousand reviews. One thing I'm noticing right here is dragon bedding set. <laughs> I really don't know what that is. Um, the average price is $43, average revenue is 7.6K, 4.3 average start. Let's, let's go ahead and check it out. Um, you could just click on those dots right there. Oh, dragging bedding set. Okay, that makes sense. I don't, I was thinking like a nest for a drag, like, never mind. So even though I don't like this idea, just because already I'm thinking about it's gonna be, you know, bedding set, there's a lot of volume there. Um, it's gonna be expensive to ship. It takes up a lot of space storage wise. Um, and it's a super subjective market. So things like artwork that are quite inspired by illustrations, I don't tend to like to sell those kinds of things because it's very hard to pinpoint specifically if a design will sell or not. One design, it could be the same product, one is just a different color scheme and it doesn't sell. Um, so I don't wanna sell this specific product, but this is, this is okay because this is exactly what I wanted to show you today. Most people would actually just click off of this and go, I'm not gonna sell that, I'm not interested. We're done with that, we're gonna keep looking through here and maybe we only have 300 ideas here or something, we get through all of them, and then where do we go from there? Okay, so here's where I do things a little bit differently. Just because I didn't like this, that's okay. Because all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull up our Chrome extension. Just did a little bit, a uh, little video yesterday about Chrome extension versus Chrome extension, John Scott versus Helium 10. Helium 10 was actually a lot more accurate this time around. Um, so I'm gonna start giving them a shot and using it a little bit more. I have been getting used to their layout a little bit. But what we're gonna do is check this out. So we're going to go ahead and look at their review count. And what I'm looking for is I want someone who's a new listing who's just absolutely crushing it. So like this person here has, um, well that one is copyrighted uh, because that's from painting your, painting your pet dragon, <laughs> training your pet dragon. Uh, that's a movie, so I don't really want to use that as exa an example. Let's go ahead and use this right here. So they're doing 5.8K per month in revenue with only nine reviews. And the reason that I'm going to use this listing as an example is because, well, they have actually proven that they're launching products and they're launching products successfully. 
Okay, so if you watch my older videos on the channel, you might see this method, um, but they actually do have some variations here so that it might not all be coming from this one, but that's okay, that's okay. Don't just click off of an idea because this, this very idea might be the opportunity for you to find more ideas. So the first way we can start trying to find more ideas is just by coming here, but a big problem you'll usually see with right here is it's all gonna be products that relate to the current product you're looking at, so it tends not to be very different or provide massive um, you know, opportunity for new ideas. What I'm gonna do is click into this storefront. Bear with me, if, you, if you've heard this before, that's fine, but I really do wanna reiterate it because it's a problem all across the board on Amazon. I hear this a lot. People are having trouble finding ideas. Um, and one thing that you can do to increase your odds of finding a good idea quickly is for every idea that you wanna leave in the dust, that's okay, leave the dragon bedding kit in the dust but go ahead and see what else these sellers that have successfully shown that they're selling this well are selling, All right? So this person tends, it looks like they have 77 results. So that's actually how many products they have on their storefront. Um, and it looks like they're all in that illustrative space really. Um, and a lot of these are tapestries and artwork of the kind, tiger, okay, wolf. What we can do is this will work anywhere. So just because this storefront isn't a gem, that's okay, because you can do this and you'll be able to learn the principles behind this anyway. All we're gonna do is come in here, you're actually sorting by their, these are all their products now. So this is all going to be um, one of these brands. It's one storefront, but it could be up to four brands. Uh, well, it could be more than four brands. You could have 10 brands if you want. That's just how many they happen to have. And then I'm just going to look again, I'm going to look for things with low reviews with high revenue because they just launched it. And if they're doing it successfully, it means, hey, we might have a shot at doing that successfully too. So if you get what we're getting at here, um, we're, we're really just turning each idea into potentially anywhere from one additional idea to a hundred additional ideas. So now, now I've kind of said, okay, that storefront didn't go great. They're all kind of in the same niche and I don't like this niche particularly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go back to square one. And then this is where you'd restart. So you see how we added that little extra step in between. And now we could go ahead and do this again. I could go back to here. And every time I find something, if I find, it doesn't really matter what we click on. Um, I, I do tend to look for things that I actually think are good here, um, but whatever it is that you click on, you, you know, select it pots three inch, um, whatever. I don't think that'll be a particularly huge um, opportunity because I think there will probably be a lot of succulent pots. But if this isn't going well, you know what we do, right? Instead of just going back and saying that didn't go well, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna look and say, who has successfully proven that they're good at launching products? Because if they've done it once, I believe if you do it once, you can do it again. Okay, so they're, they're probably not just, sometimes you'll see they just have one or two products, they're just starting. But what we're really trying to hone in on here is a gr group of storefronts that is launching products actively on Amazon and we could tag along and see what else they're launching. So maybe this wasn't good, but maybe they just launched another product and it's exactly what we're looking for. It's super low demand. They're one of the only competitors along with maybe you know anywhere from two to 20 more competitors. They all have poor quality listings. There is search demand and we know exactly how to fix the solution in that market. That's how we're gonna come in and find a perfect product idea on Amazon. Now, it doesn't always work out because I do live product research here. I never um, like have an idea of where I'm going with my product research when I start. So you really are just watching me do it just how you would be doing it on the screen recording here. So we didn't happen to find that perfect product idea today just because this is about, you know, what are we, 10 minutes in here or whatever. Um, but what I'd be doing is I do, I tend to just split it up into about one to two hours every single day. Um, fit it into your work schedule wherever you can, whether it's at night or in the morning, whatever is best for you. Um, just commit to a style of doing product research. You could try and change it up all the time, but I really think you should just become deadly accurate at one specific style, okay? Come in here, use your keyword research because we know there's already existing search volume. That's one of my favorite reasons for using this specific method of using the keyword research style is because we know we want search volume. We know we need at least a thousand searches or 800 searches, maybe as low as 700 if you're selling really, really low competition product. Um, but we know we want that search demand. So start with something like this and you never know. One of, you know, your idea might just be something in here. So it's a win-win. You're doing product research, but you're adding that extra level by going and seeing what else those sellers are selling. Um, so that's just one trick. Again, that's nothing new. I've talked about that here on the channel before, um, but if I say something more than once, it's just because it's true and that's what I actually do. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and other than that, I'll be seeing you here on the channel tomorrow for another video on the channel. Later.